Aloha. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the box model that is used in uh, managing the presentation, the display, the layout of elements on your uh, web page that you've styled using cascading style sheets. To understand the box model, we need to understand that everything that you've been structuring um, in your HTML documents is considered by the browser to be a box. And the box has four separate areas that can be defined around it. As I've kind of illustrated in this graphic. This black square in the middle represents your content. The content are your text, your images, um, those types of things that you've added to your web page. Around the black box is some red space. This is optional, but it's called padding. Okay. You can think of this as the packaging filler that comes in the box you might buy something from Amazon from. Okay. It's optional padding uh, that increases the area between uh, your content and this little blue line which marks the border. The border can be a varying thickness and type but it's the box, it's the, it's the border, the line drawn around the edge of the padding. And then outside of the border, we have some optional margin space that also influences, it can, you know, it's like padding, but on the outside of the border. And that margin space will influence how this content object is laid out relative to the browser window and the um, other elements on the web page. So we have content, padding, border, and margin. And in the rest of this video, we're going to demonstrate how you can adjust and measure all of these. Now, first of all, why is this important? It's important because as we start structuring our web page, we, you probably have a good idea of where you want things to flow. If you haven't, figured it out yet, I suggest you take out a pencil and a piece of paper and just kind of sketch out where you think things belong on the web page. And then as you have an image, and you look, well, how large is this image? Maybe it's 200 pixels wide and 100 pixels high. And say, I need a space on my web page that will fit 200 by 100 pixels. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because you don't just need 200 by 100, a rectangle, for your image, you need enough space to manage whatever padding you want around that image. Maybe there, there's a small bit of padding around the image, and then you may have drawn a border, and that border is going to take up space, and then there's some margin space. So you need to understand these properties so that you can plan your web page accordingly. Uh, being able to identify the properties of the content the padding, the, the border, and the margin are also useful when you're trying to get things to line up, perhaps on the same line, or maybe you want them to drop to a different line, or maybe you want them to behave differently depending on the size of the browser window. All of these can start to be addressed once we understand the box model. The box model for um, presentation layout on your web pages is also useful for styling tables because each table cell has padding has a border and so on. So these same properties apply in tables just as they do on laying out your um, your individual elements like text areas, images, and things like that on your web page. So stay tuned for some demonstration on how to interact with the box model using cascading style sheets.